Hello, welcome to Community College News. I'm Michael McDonald. Today on our show, why we've had less snow this year, and we take a look at the impact of drinking and driving. But first, March break offers people the chance to get away, but leaving home for a few days can put your house at risk. Here's Jill Constantine with ways to keep your home safe when traveling. During the winter months, some people turn to travel, but some of those who leave may not be protecting their homes while they are away. Deputy Police Chief John Foster says there is a new way some people may be putting themselves at risk. For, for people who are going to be traveling, for example, it's really wise not to put where you're going and that you're going to be away on Facebook, for example, because then you're telling people that you're not at home and, you know, inviting an opportunity for someone to break into your house. Before you leave for vacation, make sure your doors and windows are locked and your alarm system is working. There is also one key thing that travel agents recommend you do. Probably about the best thing that people can do is just uh, have a, a neighbor or a close friend uh, just keep an eye on your house. A neighbor or a close friend can also pick up your paper or clear your driveway to maintain the appearance of someone being home. Security companies recommend that you take your spare key out of its regular hiding place and leave it with a friend or family member. They also recommend putting your lights on a timer. In Woodstock, Jill Constantine, Community College News. The Acadian bus strike may pose a challenge for students trying to get home during the break. Tony Bourgeois spoke with those who found alternatives. In a small town like Woodstock, many students who attend the local college are from other areas of the province. Acadian Lines remains on strike it leaves many students stranded and in need of alternative means of transportation to get home from March break. They would have taken the bus, but instead a family member is making a round trip. The, the inconvenience is the biggest thing. So because of that, I'm glad I'm not one of the students looking for a drive home in the spring break. I was taking the bus for a good couple months going to and from Fredericton, but then they went on strike so I had to find other means of transportation. People post requests and offers for drives on Kijiji. Ads often suggest a little money in exchange for the trip. The problem is these ads don't always work. Sometimes you can take days to hear a response, or sometimes not even get them at all. Chad Paris needed to get to Woodstock from St. John to pick up his vehicle for work. He put a request online and says it did not go as he hoped. In three days, not one person responded to the ad. Um, it didn't work uh, at all, actually. I guess Woodstock's not a real hot spot to go from St. John's. Sites like Maritime Rideshare and CanadaRideshare.com have lists of people that are traveling and are willing to carpool. With a little luck, hopefully this bus strike won't hinder your ability to travel over March break. In Woodstock, Tony Bourgeois, Community College News. Most of New Brunswick has received a lot less snow this winter. The cause? A weather phenomenon known as La Nina. Brad Perry has more. Looking outside the public works garage in Woodstock, things are quiet. On the inside, crews are preparing for a winter storm. But so far this winter, the workers have not had a lot of snow to remove. So far this winter, the Maritimes have received about half of the snowfall they would normally receive. Meteorologist Trevor Adams says this is due to the weather phenomenon known as La Nina. When we have a La Nina, the eastern parts of Canada typically tend to see warmer temperatures and uh, wet conditions, but of course with warmer temperatures you get more rain than you would snow. Andrew Garnett is the head of public works for the town of Woodstock. He has seen the warmer temperatures firsthand. Um, we've seen a lot less snow, uh, however we've seen a lot of uh, you know, warm temperatures and cold temperatures, so we've had some more icy conditions than we've had probably last year. He says it looks like Woodstock will remain below normal for snowfall. We're about on pace to be about a foot less. Adam says the warmer than normal trend is expected to continue. Temperatures have certainly have been trending a couple of degrees above seasonal um, over the past uh, couple of weeks and that trend looks like it's going to continue into um, uh, March and April. Adam says winter may not be everyone's favorite time of year, but to enjoy it while it lasts. Remember, spring rolls in March 20th. In Woodstock, Brad Perry, Community College News. It's a tragic thing that happens all too often. Imagine answering your door to find a police officer informing you a loved one was killed by a drunk driver. Martin Poirier has more on the impact of drunk driving. Impaired driving affects everyone. Driving drunk can kill. <laughs> 
Deputy Chief John Foster knows all too well the consequences that come from driving under the influence of alcohol. Foster lost his brother to a drunk driver. When I was a young constable on, on patrols and, and I would stop someone for impaired driving and it would be all this, you're going to ruin my life, it's your fault, I'm going to get fired. I'm, and it's like, you know, man, you're talking to the wrong guy. Don't tell me that I've ruined your life. You're still breathing. Nine out of ten fatal crashes in Canada are a result of alcohol. In 2006, over 60,000 Canadian drivers were charged with driving while impaired. Over 32,000 of those drivers were convicted. Four can Canadians are killed each day due to impaired driving crashes and about over 200 are injured every day. Many drivers who have had a little to drink do not consider the consequences of getting behind the wheel. Blowing over the legal limit will force you to immediately lose your license for seven up to 90 days. And you will end up before a judge to face charges that could lead to fines and losing your license for a year. Now, impaired driving is 100% preventable. Uh, there are, are other means um, that people can use if they decide that they're going to have a few drinks. Like they could take a cab, they can sleep over. They had more than they realized. You know, it creeps up on them, they bought more than they thought, their friends give them drinks, and they really think that they're okay. Deputy Chief Foster does not think that there are fewer impaired drivers on the road today. He says police are busier with other types of calls, leaving less time to catch impaired drivers. If you've had a few drinks, don't take a chance of getting behind the wheel. Call a friend, take a taxi, because if you don't, this could be you. In Woodstock, Martin Poirier, Community College News. You may be surprised to learn you can't just read any book you want. Even in Canada, books and magazines are sometimes banned at the border. Schools and libraries are regularly asked to take material off their shelves. Our Kyle DuPont with more on Freedom to Read Week. Freedom of expression is one of the most valued rights in Canada. 28 years ago, the Book and Periodical Council created the Freedom to Read Week. According to their website, this annual national event reminds Canadians why we must remain vigilant in protecting our right to free expression, a right that is too frequently challenged. Kate Waller believes that many people are unaware that their rights may be hindered. Especially with the younger generation, I think they aren't aware that books can be challenged. Catcher in the Rye, 1984, Lord of the Flies, and even the Bible were at one time or another challenged or banned. John Tate says any book can be challenged for anything a specific individual feels is wrong or offensive. Uh, you could take almost any one of these books off a shelf and any one person could find something wrong with it. As Canadians, we have the ability to challenge any book for any reason. But according to Waller, the banning and censoring of books takes away from our intellectual freedom and our freedom of expression. I really do think there's a danger in banning certain books and um, it does put a restriction on our intellectual freedom and I think um, in Canada especially that intellectual freedom is very important and we should uh, guard it. The simple luxury of walking into a bookstore or library and taking a book off the shelf is something many Canadians take for granted. Many people around the world cannot access information with such ease. In Woodstock, Kyle DuPont, Community College News. For one local athlete, the dream of a lifetime is coming true. She's traveling to Italy for the World Masters Games. John Calland reports. Torino, Italy will be hosting the World Masters in August 2013. Athletes from around the world have the chance to show off their skills and ability in their chosen sport. Joy Hansen is a Woodstock resident who will be representing Canada in Torino. She hosted a night of dancing and singing to raise funds for the trip. I'm going to be participating in softball. I've actually been picked up by a team from Prince Edward Island to go play with them. Uh, Fourteen ladies from the island and two from New Brunswick. Mary Hansen came out to help collect funds for Joy's trip. Mary is very proud to see her sister-in-law make this amazing journey. It's, it's a great reward, I think, for uh, you know, all, the, all the work that she's put into. and the, she's, She uh, has played for, well, we played together for many, many years. Hansen has seen a lot of support from the community. I mean, it's, it's wonderful. They, the, the town is very supportive in a lot of ways. Um, for example, the Knights have donated the hall for tonight. Uh, my DJ has given me a really good rate on his uh, fee. With a $10 donation, people enjoyed the dance-filled evening. 
and a chance to win door prizes. Yeah. Hanson hopes to raise $5,000 for a trip to Italy next August. Until then, she will continue to fundraise and is proud of the support the town of Woodstock is providing. In Woodstock, John Callum, Community College News. Schools across the country were a bit brighter as thousands of students wore pink t-shirts. The campaign shows supports for victims of bullying. Jeff Stairs has more. I'm wearing pink to support the anti-bullying campaign that I believe is nationwide. I am wearing pink because it is pink t-shirt day and it supports no bullying. I want to support the cause for anti-bullying. I have a daughter that's in elementary school and it surrounds them on a regular basis. I think this problem needs to be solved. In the hallways here at MBCC Woodstock, splashes of pink stand out in the crowd. The bright t-shirts are intended to bring awareness to a growing concern, bullying. Pink T-Shirt Day began in Nova Scotia in 2007 when high school students stood up for a classmate who'd been teased for his unconventionally colored shirt. The movement has seen growing popularity in schools across Canada. Organizers estimate that over 160,000 people took part in last year's Pink Shirt campaign. Five years later, anyone can buy official Pink Shirt Day apparel to join in the cause. Proceeds from shirt sales benefit the Boys and Girls Clubs of Canada. So each club would do something different with it, but it's not, you know, it's not a huge fundraiser for us. It's not something that we make a lot of money off of. Hamilton says that although the club doesn't make much money from the campaign, awareness is their main concern. In Woodstock, Jeff Stairs, Community College News. In our next show, you may think stores are supposed to keep violent and otherwise explicit video games from young hands. Are the laws too lax? Some store owners and parents think so. Game over on the next Community College News. That's our show for today. To contact us with story ideas, email jschoolmbcc at gmail.com. Or for more of our work, visit jschoolmbcc.ca. Thanks for watching. Enjoy your spring break.